Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to your weekly specials. We are going to be changing things up and I'm going to try and get you the info much more compactly and quicker and not waffle on so much about each of the products. But I just wanted to start off today with a little PSA. Just to make it clear, I don't work at Eptech. I'm a subcontractor. I have my own business. It subcontracts services to Eptech. I do media for them. On the, I run Eavesports for them. We do the reviews and all of that kind of stuff. And the purpose of me being here is to help you. It's, that's why I'm here and that's what I'm about and what I'm doing. I operated, you know, for 18 months independently before we joined EvTech. And the reason I started any of this is just because I wanted to help the community that it helped me. So I need you guys to understand I'm on your side 100% all the time. If you need help, please put me up in the comments. If it's stuff to do with sales or issues on warranty claims, etc., I'm going to be limited in what I can do for you. I can feed it back to the marketing team. Is about the best I can do. Uh, but as far as like info about products and what you're purchasing and what you're going to be spending your money on, that's exactly what I'm here to help you with. So starting off with what's going on on EveTech at the moment, the giveaways are pumping across all of the social media platforms. If you want to be able to get to them quickly or find out what's going on, it's literally just a click away and then it'll transfer you to the relative page wherever that is going to be. So in this case, Twitter, then you can see exactly what the post is and what, how to enter and then put your entries in from there. And then it is being split up across the social media pages. But they are going to have as many as three giveaways a week until Black Friday hits. So that's coming up in about, what, two weeks? Not even, what, in terms of 10th? We're, well, two weeks, so 17 days left until we hit Black Friday. I'm not sure where, where it's gonna land, but it's about the 27th, usually towards the end of November. The second little bit of info is I have gotten to 12900K. I've got the test bench, I've, I had to do, I just had to run Fire Strike on it to see what it would do. 45,000 points. <laughs> The things is there. There is a 6900 XT water cooled in there with it. So this should be actually a pretty cool review, like showing you pretty much what the tippy of the top is. Big thanks to Aces for putting those builds together and for getting us the stock ahead of time. But starting over the top 10 at number 10, it's a Razer Death Adder Mini V2. Really good for the smaller hand. It's 35G acceleration with 300 IPS as well. So it's gonna be good for like a mid-range gaming mouse. Two year warranty, 500 bucks. Really solid little product. At number nine, it's audio for those who like in-ears, especially if you're on the move or something like that. What's really nice about these is how they interlock into your ear. This interlocking position and stuff is really good. I've particularly, I, I, I don't like in-ears. I've never really liked them, but these were super, super sick to use, I have to say. And they can be used individually, which is quite nice. So you don't have to have full stereo. You still get a microphone and everything with an individual set. So if you're driving around, etc. And you can use it like that as well. At number eight, it's a Razer Huntsman Mini with the purple switches. I've done this exact review of this exact keyboard and I thought it was a pretty good deal at two and a half grand. So you come down to 2K is actually quite nice. This should be, if you look after it, one of the last keyboards you'll ever need to buy. Coming in at number seven, it's a ViewSonic 240Hz, 32 inch, 1500R curve. It's like a weird setup, this thing, but at six grand with a three-year warranty it like strikes me as sick value if you're not too worried about ppi i know a lot of people prefer 1440p and i know exactly why you would because it is a lot sharper having that pixel density but if you're happy with 1080p gaming and you're not going to sit right on top of the monitor 240 hertz with the curve and stuff this is such an interesting panel from viewsonic it's got like speakers built into it as well it's kind of interesting 103 percent is what they're quoting on srgb so it should be it's a tn so it should be okay for the and stuff but this strikes me as like a really good crossover panel so if you're doing like xbox ps4 etc and pc then this is going to be sick for that just ahead of that number six it's the cheapest way to go 144 with the lg there is a full review if you do need to check it out but this is straightforward tn panel good contrast ratio because that's lg style I prefer that personally, it just makes your colors pop more because they, there's more variance in their contrasting between each other. And well, it's 144, it's one millisecond response time, true one millisecond response time. And pixel re response times on the TN is just way better than pretty much anything else still. Breaking into the top half at number five, it's a 275 r airflow. This is a really, really good case, really good bang for buck. It can also fit the longboy GPU. So if you want something a bit simpler and more straightforward, this is, going to be a good one for you it's typically set up for 
your uh, 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 water cooling to be at the front they've got in the example yeah there's a 120 more at the back which is also an option but if you're looking at like 240 280 more then this is going to work out quite nicely for you it does come with three included fans no rgb or any fancy add-ons like that but if you want something no frills no fuss that's really well dimensioned this is the one i would suggest i have built in and before did a mid-range pc with like a normal air cooling kind of setup and it worked really really nicely for that and number four, it's the best bang for buck gaming system you can set up right now. This upgrade kit's really nice. I always do the add-on of the RAM, so you know it's going to be 81 if you get the 32 gig in dual channel. DDR4, DDR5 is out now, but DDR4 is not going anywhere. This is the 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 longest I've seen past generation stuff continuously being sold, and because of the chip shortage. It's probably going to be really good just because you can buy it right now. Six and a half came for the base system. It is a really nice base system. Once again, I have built with this. I did a, a mate's machine um, for his first ever gaming PC, which was kind of cool. And with with the base setup with a single DIMM. But really, that double DIMM is a 15% to 20% performance increase. Especially if you're playing things like CS and Dota and CPU dependent titles, then you're really going to want that extra RAM. At number three, it's like the premium budget version of what I just said, because now you're doubling up the cores. It is the normal 3900, so it does have a TDP of 65 watts. It'll probably get to about 100. This cooler is going to be more than enough for it, though. Probably won't ever see 70 degrees. But with this build, you get this X570 board. So you've got PCI Express 4.0 when you do upgrade to a 5000 series processor, which means you get all that NVMe speed. So the board's got some nice future proofing in it. The RAM as well is 3600 megahertz CL18 which is exactly what i'm running if you want to see ryzen and ram there is a full thing on youtube to explain that but basically 3600 megahertz cl18 is so much faster on ryzen it's almost as good as 3200 cl16 in dual channel it's about five to maybe ten percent slower than that that's how much of an improvement that will create for you at number two is a hit vision e1000 this is just a really good uh, gen 3 nvme no fills no fuss i'm using it as my main os drive it's been pretty great i edit off of it and do a whole bunch of stuff off of it at the moment and it's been ticking along without skipping a beat i've got about 600 gigs worth of files on mine now and it's exactly the same performance as when i first put it in and finally my pick for deal of the week it's an intel game b560 plus plus an 11600 plus the 16 gigs of the 3600 you do the upgrade to the two 16 gigs it's going to cost you 9200 bucks you get a water cooled 11600 non-k variant with a b560 this is like the perfect pairing especially because b560 now unlike previous generations can actually do the ram overclocking and do the xmp so you're going to get the full speed from this memory with the 11600 is quite a nice little gaming processor by little i mean like pretty much esports ready right and b560 plus like i said it's it's perfect this is this is the kind of match made in heaven bundle and it should run exceptionally well Anywho, this is what I have for you in the top 10. If you have enjoyed it, please hit us up with a like and subscribe. And we're never going to speak about what happened last week ever again. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. I love you. Bye.